Hey y'all, Alex from Music Hub here, and today we'll be doing a review of the 2020 biography by Tim McGrath, James Monroe, A Life. Really quick, some context here. I have a personal goal of reading at least one full-length biography of every U.S. president at some point in my life, and so far I'm on POTUS number five in this journey. I mentioned the previous books I read in an old live stream that I did a number of months back, which I'll link down below in case you're curious, but I'll list them out quick here. George Washington, I read the four-part series by James Thomas Flexner, uh, Washington A Life by Ron Chernow, and Alexis Coe's You Never Forget Your First. For John Adams, I read Paige Smith's two-part biography and David McCullough's single-volume work. Thomas Jefferson, I <laughs> slogged through the six-part series by Dumas Malone. Uh, can you tell I wasn't a huge fan of that one? And uh, for single volumes, I read John B. Bowles' Jefferson, Architect of American Liberty. And then for James Madison, I read Ralph Ketchum's biography of Madison. So next up, obviously, is James Monroe, born the 28th of April, 1758, in Monroe Hall, Virginia, died the 4th of July, 1831, in New York City. He fought in the Revolutionary War. He helped build Virginia into a political powerhouse, both as a senator and as a governor, and his strength as James Madison's most important cabinet member during the War of 1812 led to his two terms as president from 1817 to 1820. His presidency is generally considered to be above average with things such as the Monroe Doctrine supporting uh, the independence of the Americas and thus also asserting the U.S.'s dominance on this continent. Um, however, the Missouri Compromise of 1820 uh, generated a lot of controversy leading to the political and social instability which would in time lead to the Civil War. This book here is written by Tim McGrath, a Philadelphia-based author who also works as the president of a healthcare recruiting company. McGrath is a boat aficionado and has a background in sailing, so both of his previous books were U.S. naval history, specifically about the Revolutionary War. One of them is a biography of John Barry. The books have good reviews, but this Monroe biography is by far the highest profile work he's written to date, so um, how was it? Well, the main thing is that McGrath validates my own feelings about Monroe, which is that he is one of our most underrated presidents historically. It's not necessarily a great reason to like a book. Oh, you, you just like it because it confirms your own preconceived notions. But I'd also like to rephrase that by saying it doesn't just tell me Monroe is underappreciated. It makes a strong case for it, and it convinces me more of this belief than I was before reading this book. McGrath seems to admire Monroe the man, especially his desire to avoid excessive partisanship. That desire becomes somewhat naive towards the end of Monroe's presidency as his political party was splintering in the wake of the Missouri Compromise and the election to replace Monroe in 1824 became one of the most infamous elections in history because of all the wheelings and dealings behind the scenes. But it it was a valiant hope. As far as the writing itself goes, McGrath is more engaging than I was expecting. His writing style has a sense of voice and personality that makes itself known just enough to keep the book from being dry fact recitation. He paces things well, too, balancing the presidency years with the pre-presidency years very evenly, which helps give me appreciation for the sheer amount of accomplishments Monroe had lined up before entering the White House, including two stints in the battlefield almost 40 years apart, unbelievably enough. Monroe's quick decline into irrelevance and poverty after leaving the presidency is documented so quickly you'd miss it if you blinked, but that kind of feels like the point. He was yesterday's news as the door was shutting on his political career, and according to McGrath, just like what Ron Chernow preaches in his Alexander Hamilton biography, it's time for a proper reappraisal. 
And it's a great reappraisal. I have no major complaints with this book. The only thing I'll say is that if you're not interested in reading about military tactics and battlefield scenes and that like, there are a fair few of those in the first half of the book, the pre-presidency years, so tread knowledgeably, mindfully there. But there is a lot to love, and so far it rates among my favorite biographies I've read in this presidential journey so far. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. As always, more reviews are to come. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time right here on Music Hub.